like that. Well, this is a nice one. Experiencing spiritual breakthrough. Well, and I don't know how many other old books I have around here that uh, I don't know. This is a good one. I like this book. Timothy Keller. Oh, look, look, here's some clergy books. Let's see, you get the dust on them. Okay. Now, the reason I started off uh, showing you some literature is because I want to show you how people operate in their mind, uh, in the Western mind. They learn up scripture. And in the beginning of this video, you saw my Bible shelf with some of my Bibles there. Um, but they learn up, people learn up scriptures. They have seminaries. They have courses that teach you proper Bible doctrine, teach you different viewpoints of theologians throughout history. Uh, I just showed you an audio tape ser uh, series of experiencing spiritual breakthroughs and hard sayings of the Bible. Okay, well, that's wonderful. Um, there's nothing wrong with studying to show yourself approved, which it, with, uh, with with learning the things of God. Oh, man, here's some other ones. Uh, John Piper, real uh, passion of the Christ. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I've done this before. I like these supermarket things. Bible A to Z. Find it pass fast in the Bible because, quite frankly, I'm not an academic. Although I've been around academics all my life. As a matter of fact, I was born with a severe learning disability. I was a dyslexic. Had dyslexia. I was one of the first students in the United States to learn phonetics. As a matter of fact, I was a hmm, a student that was used in Johns Hopkins University to teach uh, interns about uh, phonetics. And my parents, bless their hearts, they had enough, I don't know, they were enough well-to-do enough where they could get me uh, private tutoring and I could learn to read and um, function like most other children around me. Um, I don't normally go saying this, but I was, uh, I got up to fourth grade and I didn't know how to read. Uh, they had me stamp collecting in the back room. They didn't know what was wrong with me. And, but the Lord knew. The Lord was in me and the Lord was with, well, he wasn't in me as of yet, but the Lord was with me. And they discovered that I had this severe learning disability. So I really don't like reading that much, although I can read. Uh, but I pick thing up, things up by hearing. And the scripture teaches us that uh, to learn by hearing and hearing the word of God. And, you know, it's interesting because uh, years ago, only the church uh, studied the scriptures. Only their priests, the clergy and laity thing that came from the... Uh, the false church, the whore and her daughters, if you will. Sorry, I'm not uh, beating around the bush on this video, but uh, you know the the laity, the laymen, they didn't have any uh, understanding of the things of God, so they had to go to the priest, and the priest would tell them uh, how to uh, enter into the kingdom of heaven, which was for the most part. Uh, the Bible teaches us to repent, which means to change your mind. Uh, and um, this is, uh, you know, the, the bastardization of that is doing penance, doing something for God. So you say, uh, Hail Mary's, give so much money, do this, do that, work it off, work your sins off, give us your money. You know, these are all demonic counterfeits of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, 
I have studied. I studied in street ministry for six years with a man 22 years in seminary. My mother was a woman's Bible teacher. My father was a deacon in the church. Uh, so I was drilled in good doctrine and good theology. And praise God for that. Praise God for my good Bible understanding. But just like I showed you that hard saying of the Bible, um, that's not the way that you know truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. And we all have heard of, you know, sign up for Jesus. Let's all go up to the altar and confess Jesus Christ in our heart. And we shall be saved from hellfire, saved from sin. And then we're sealed. We're sealed by the uh, Holy Spirit. Um, yeah. Yeah, for the most part, that's true. However, and this is where people get into doctrinal positions, uh, you're not a slave to Christ. You have a free will. You decide if you're indeed going to follow him or if you're going to take the broad road. And most people take the broad road because Jesus says, few that it will be that find me. Few that it will be that find it. Few enter into the marriage feast of the Lamb um, in the end days, and um, so the so I don't care how much good Bible knowledge you have, how much study you have, how well read you are. Although that is all those things are helpful, the only way that we can know truth is by the Spirit of Truth, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit that many of us claim to have and be sealed with don't even know him it's a conceptual thing that many people have in coming to the lord jesus christ and you know this united states and great britain for instance have been blessed because we follow the principles that are in the scripture is it scripture you know thou shall not murder honor thy mother and father all that type of thing the old testament commandments um, that's why countries have been so blessed of God, because they're at least following the principles of God. But knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and following biblical principles are two entirely different things. And this is what uh, it's taken me, <clears throat> it's taken the Lord over 50 years to show me. I'm uh, only 53. I didn't start learning when I was uh, three years old, of course. But it has taken the Lord um, most of my lifetime to teach me how to follow and listen and be obedient to Him in spirit. And it really doesn't matter how well trained up in my Bible knowledge I am uh, and uh, how ill trained I am. Um, it has helped me uh, because I don't, I haven't been. Um, caught in traps and cults and false religions. I'm no, I know what the scripture says and I know uh, that Jesus is the true truth of God and I can spot Bible truth from Bible error uh, being taught, which there's a lot of that around today. But the, the true uh, message of salvation is by spirit and when we're born again by spirit, the Lord indwells us with the Holy Spirit. And I've just been amazed that most of the people in my life that claim his name, I don't believe really know him. And I used to think that they were just ignorant that they could hear the Lord. The Lord started uh, years ago um, when I was in street ministry under Dr. Gross uh, for six years. I saw healings and demonic activity, and the Lord showed, started showing me his truth back then, because I asked him to show me. I said, I don't want to believe what somebody tells me. Lord, you show me. And um, that's exactly what a true believer will do, because they hunger and thirst after the truth. Okay? It's not a pride thing, as I've been accused of. People that don't have the Lord Jesus Christ and don't have the Holy Spirit accuse those of us who do uh, as being proud. 
because they're not willing to admit that maybe you have something they don't. And I've also noticed that uh, if you're around specifically church people, they'll get very irritated with your presence because they can sense Christ in you, especially if you're a mature believer. And you will always be marginalized. And this is exactly what happened to the disciples. And it's what happened to Christ himself. And of course, in the Old Testament, it happened to the prophets. Because men want to make themselves right before God. This is what religion does. But Jesus Christ, Christianity, is not a religion. It is a relationship. And we always hear that. Uh, terminology has been coined. It's not a religion, it's a relationship. But that is the truth of God. It is a relationship. And if you don't have that relationship, if you don't walk as the Lord's disciple, if you don't follow Him in spirit, then you don't have it. And what I've found in my chagrin is that most people indeed do not. And I don't care how well trained up they are or not. Um, and uh, that's what the Lord has been showing me lately is uh, who his people are and uh, who my brethren are and who, who are not. And I can tell by experience. I can tell by experience because I experience the Holy Spirit. I can identify the Holy Spirit in them as they can identify the Holy Spirit in me. But the confusion comes in when you start uh, trying to apply Bible to it. Just like the Pharisees did to Jesus, they tried to assimilate it in their intellect, challenge Christ in their own understanding. The Bible says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all ways acknowledge him, and he shall make straight your path. And that's the truth. It's nothing that we do. It is something that God does within us. And I believe, of course, that God elects his people before the foundation of the earth. He engineers your salvation. He brings you to Christ. And he doesn't have to have, sorry churchers, but he doesn't have to have missionaries going into the field. He doesn't, the Great Commission, everybody thinks that's talking about all Christians. No, it was not. It was Christ talking to the disciples, 11 disciples. Paul wasn't even around yet. But more importantly, he said, who is my disciple? Here, you know, who is my mother, father, sister, brother? There are people that follow him. In Matthew, he says, well, let the dead bury their own dead. When if God wanted to bury his father, he was worried about his inheritance because his father wasn't dead yet. Or the scribe said, Master, what do I do to follow you? And he said, well, the birds have their nests in the air and the foxes have their holes, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. These are all talking about spiritually following the Lord Jesus Christ and not... Uh, being conformed to the ways of this world, quite frankly. And uh, when you start hitting on these type of truths, the people that do not follow the Lord Jesus Christ, they get very angry with you because it's Satan himself coming against Christ within you. And this is something that I'm learning. This is a real battle. You have real enemies and real spiritual warfare. And it doesn't have to do with the Western mind, Eastern mind, as Dr. R.C. Sproul seems to think. No, it has to do with the mind or walking in the spirit. There's nothing wrong with reading. There's nothing wrong with studying to show yourself approved. But if you are the Lord's, he will reveal all truth to you. They will be taught of God. And the, the counterfeit to that is being taught of man. That's why I don't care how well you can memorize all those scriptures up there. I don't, I don't care how, how great an academic you are. If you're not taught of God, you're simply not taught of God. You're simply not one of his. Um, that you can be blessed in your life because you understand the principles of godly living. Uh, I would never deny that. That's why this country's been so blessed. But the, the whole fact of the matter is it has nothing to do with our own understanding. It has to do with God doing a work in and of us if we are his and if we continue with him and are not cut off and burnt. And most people will take the broad road and become cut off and burnt. And a lot of people think that by doing church, uh, that's their, uh, you know, they're locked in. Well, I go to church. I read my Bible. I pray. Well, you know, God looks at the heart and that may be fine. But what I'm finding is that most people, 
that do those things in the established church really don't know him. They're not his disciples. There's only few people that I've met within that establishment that truly hear and function and move in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's very sad. It's very, very sad. And this is the clergy and laity lie um, that was started during Constantine. And um, if you know anything about church history, you understand Martin Luther looked at the painting, had the clergy ship and the laity in the sea, reaching up towards the towards the uh, clergy ship, which kind of goes back to the Old Testament, so level of a priest, uh, and uh, you know that uh, represent was representation of Christ and and all those type of things. But in the New Testament, Jesus said. He is the only moderator between man and God. That, that means that each and every one of us, if we're truly lords, have to hold the head ourselves. We have to have a spiritual relationship in the Lord. Now, elders, it's fine to have elders. It's biblical to have elders. We all know that, uh, you know, Peter said, well, let there be, uh, take some of these guys that are pretty biblical and make them deacons because I don't want to be waiting on tables. So they made deacons and they made elders. Okay, fine. These were busy men, uh, and there's nothing wrong with doing that because it is, is in fact biblical. But a elder is somebody who has a deep spiritual understanding, spiritual understanding, and relationship with the Lord, not just an academic understanding with the Lord, which that uh, I feel most people hold, and I dare say that probably the majority of ministers I know don't even know the Lord Jesus Christ. So really, they're disqualified. They're not even real Christians. So uh, these are the ugly truths that I'm starting to, to see as I meet other brethren that are like myself, that have experienced the rejection because of Christ within them. And it doesn't have to do with spiritual pride. It has to do with having the Holy Spirit and people that don't have the Holy Spirit, well, I guess if they're not elected to God, they won't ever have him. But, uh, so guess what? They take it out on those of us that do. I don't claim to understand that because it's by grace that you're saved, not of your own good works, so that no man may boast. But um, I notice that most people that uh, do boast in the flesh, they do boast and their Bible understanding, and they uh, they crush and, and attack the uh, spiritual babes in Christ, people that have that have started with the Lord Jesus Christ, but they don't uh, they're not conformed, or maybe don't know enough to be conformed enough to a systematic theology, a church system, and they are indeed crushed. And, but a true elder will never do that. He will, he will recognize the spirit within you and encourage you. And just like Jesus said to me, follow me, follow me, follow me. For years, the Lord whispered in my ear, follow me, follow me. And I was going to become an Anglican uh, priest, uh, independent one, of course. Um, and uh, I've, uh, I've been offered some positions, but the whole time the Lord told me, follow me, follow me, and I cannot follow anything but the Lord. I hope somebody's uh, clocking what I'm saying here. It has nothing to do with ourselves. It is by the grace of God that starts to work in you and will continue it until they grace Jesus. But we must be obedient. We must have, we must hunger and thirst for the truth, for the truth of God. And that's only, it's not received here. But it's received here. Uh, dear Dr. Galt said that uh, people miss heaven by 18 inches from the head to the heart. And uh, that's not mine. That was Dr. Galt's that said that. And that's exactly true. And that's unfortunately, um, was it's always been the case with human beings. We must come to the Lord. The way to the Lord is down is confessing our great need for him and that quite frankly we can do nothing without him and the people that can do something without him basically are saying i don't need him and god doesn't need them either god bless